Kazungu Deni yafatiwe mu mudugudu wa Gishikiri akagari ka Busanza mu murenge wa Kanombo wa karere ka Kicukiri mwibazwa mu bugenza cya Kazungu yemeye ko yishe abantu This man killed 12 women and buried their dead bodies in his kitchen all because one of them infected him with HIV This is the story of Dennis Kazungu a 32 year old serial killer in Kigali Rwanda whose horrific dealings came to light in September of 2023 after his landlord asked him to leave all because he was unable to pay his rent. Dennis is said to be a good looking young man who owns a motorcycle spare part shop and lived in a secluded compound in Gashikiri village in Kigali where his house seemed to be isolated from his neighbors almost like a house on the hills and from what we know he lived mostly alone it's not stated if he had a partner or if he was married i guess for what it turned out to be it's not surprising that he most likely was a single bachelor his daily life must have involved going to his shop then going to bars because most of his victims were women he picked up from bars and took home for the purpose of sex and maybe for the purpose of satisfying his urge to kill it's unclear when his killing spree may have begun, but since it is believed that one of his victims had gone missing in March of 2022, it is very possible that Dennis may have started his killing spree way over a year ago. However, on the 5th of September 2023, after failing to pay his rent, his landlord asked him to move out, but he refused and kept pleading. However, this is business, and since he was unable to pay his rent, he would have to move because a new tenant was looking to move in. After Dennis refused out to move out of the apartment and his refusal to pay his rent, the landlord involved the police. And when the police came, they decided to forcefully evacuate Dennis. And in the process of doing so, something strange happened. According to the police, Dennis began to cry and beg. It was not the kind of begging and crying you would imagine he was doing. One would think he would cry and beg to be allowed to stay in the house. But there was something else that it seemed that Dennis was worried about. Something suspicious, something off. To the policeman, Dennis wasn't crying about losing the apartment or being evacuated. It appeared that there was something more that Dennis was afraid of when it came to being kicked out of the apartment. And that was when the police decided to dig a little deeper as to his concern. And it was along this line that Dennis confessed to having a skeleton in his closet. More like skeletons in his kitchen which led the police to carry out a search in the apartment where they discovered a huge hole in the floor of his kitchen that contained a pile of dead bodies, some fresher than the others, which means a lot of these victims have been there for over a year. This discovery revealed the killer that is Dennis Kazungu. A total of 12 dead bodies was found in his kitchen, 11 female and one male, which was odd because, you know, he only picked up prostitutes, took them home, have sex with them and kill them before putting them in that hole. How come there was a young man in the mix, a 25 year old young good looking man by the name of Eric? Who was Herrick and how did he get into this man's house and why was he killed like the other victims who had a similar pattern of being picked up, used and killed? It turns out that Dennis did have an explanation as to why there was a male dead body in the mix because at this point a lot of people started suspecting maybe he was not only picking female sex workers, maybe he was picking up male too because Except Eric, there was another man in the mix. Dennis confessed to killing 14 people in total. Despite only 12 bodies was found in his kitchen hole, he agreed that there were two other people he had killed. Another man and another woman whose body had not been found as at the time of making this video. So this additional detail makes his killing count a total of 14, with 12 of them being female and 2 of them being male. All the women he killed, he claimed, were sex workers he had picked up, prostitutes, whom he had picked up and taken home. However, when it came to one of the victims, which was the 25-year-old Eric, a young man who went missing in March of 2022, Dennis explained that Eric was not part of the people he solicited sex from, that he was just a young man he lured to his house under an unknown guise just for the purpose of killing him and stealing his identity which kind of makes sense because he would want to identify as someone else other than himself but the fact that he picked a younger looking man that is 
10 times younger than he is because Dennis is 35 and the victim, Eric, was 25. So it was difficult for me to understand what he wanted to use Eric's identity for. If he wanted to steal someone's identity, he should have just picked someone around his own age range. I'm guessing. However, that was his claim that he killed Eric to steal his identity and not for anything else, which I doubt. Ce que je veux, c'est qu'il soit vite condamné avant qu'il ne tente de s'échapper. Comme elle, ce jour-là, des dizaines de journalistes, youtubeurs et passants ont assisté à l'avant-procès de celui qui a affirmé avoir appris à tuer en regardant des films sur des tueurs en série. Il y a quelqu'un qui a donné le contact. Dennis was eventually taken to court where he explained that the reason why he was killing these women was because they infected him with HIV. But the thing is, was it all the women that infected him with HIV? Apparently, it might have been that he had picked up a sex workout sometime in the past and got infected and started having some form of resentment for these sex workers, which he claimed is his villain origin. Maybe one day he picked up a sex worker, had sex and, you know, found out that he was infected and started hating sex workers from there. I guess that is his claim because since then, whenever he picked up one, he takes them home, sleeps with them, kill them and bury them in his kitchen. But his claim under this HIV infection was that the sex worker that infected him deliberately did it, which I found odd. Unless, of course, the person took out blood from their skin and forced it down his own veins. I don't know how the prostitute that he picked up would willingly want to infect him. These are two choices to be made. If you're going to bring up a sex worker to your home, you have to protect yourself to sleep with them. But if Dennis is assuming or if Dennis is claiming that the sex worker was the one who refused to use the protection, then it's odd. Because I don't know and I don't understand this claim. I personally don't believe this was his motive. I just feel this is a serial killer who just enjoys killing women. And that is what I feel. Although that is his claim and that is what he believes started or began making him act the way he did and killing these women. But the ironic thing or the sad thing about this Dennis discovery or this serial killing discovery is that he should have been caught long before now. He should have been arrested long before now because there have been signs and instances where his neighbors who may have lived a little distance from him realized that something was off with this man. And aside that, somewhere in July of 2023, he was arrested after he was suspected of rape robbery, theft, and other crimes. I guess he had a situation where all of these things came to his face, but you know, there was no evidence and so he was released. Even long before September, his neighbors had explained to the police when they came to do an interview. It was said that two of his victims had run out of his house with serious injuries, while one of them he was forced to release that one because people had heard a girl screaming from his house, which means his neighbor knew that this man was up to something. His neighbor knew that there was something off about this man. Because on three different occasions, three different women had luckily escaped from the cold hands of this deathful man. And it was said that after each of these women escaped, they reported to the local police chief in their community. But nothing was done. Nothing. This would have been a good time to investigate this man. Three women running out of your house with injuries, one of them had to scream her way out of it. And even for the intervention of neighbors who had heard her screaming, the same person would have been dead. Because it was said when the neighbors heard screaming coming from his house, they went to confront him, stood by his door and asked him to let the woman go. Which he did. And you can imagine, 12 old people have come into that house and never made it out alive. 12 human beings. And according to what was said, when these women who had escaped from his house reported to the police, the reason why the police or their local police did not do anything at the time was because they thought this was just an ordinary dispute between a sex worker and a customer. You know, one of those disputes where, oh, if you don't pay me my money, this would happen and that would happen. That was what they thought. And that was how they let this man go scot-free. That was how they did not investigate this man on time, giving him more grace to continue his killing spree. So which meant if he had paid his rent somehow that year, the dead bodies would have been piling up to 24 by the next year. I don't get. So all he needed to do was to pay rent for the killing to continue. Because for him to get away with 12 people, that means he could have gotten away with more. Devant la cour, Kazungu a assuré avoir tué ses victimes, majoritairement des travailleuses du sexe, 
car elle lui aurait donné le sida. Les corps ont été retrouvés ligotés. Une enquête est en cours pour vérifier les dires de M. Kazungu. When he showed up to court, he did not have a lawyer. And so, since he admitted to the killings, he was found guilty. He is yet to be sentenced. And I know he's going to get the maximum sentence, of course. Because clearly, he is very sane and very mentally stable to face the full extent of the law. He committed this crime in good health. And so, he should deal with the punishment in the same good health. But I just can't imagine 12 dead bodies in your kitchen. And I don't think it's a hole where you just bury someone and keep. It looks like a pit that whenever he kills them, he just throws them in there and cover it somehow, some way. I wonder how he sleeps at night. I wonder how no one was able to perceive the stench of 12 decaying human beings. Or could it be he was using some kind of chemicals to preserve them or to make them not smell as bad as they should? Because 12 whole dead bodies is a lot. And I think the neighbors should have perceived them long before he was caught and arrested. The way he killed his victims has not been stated, whether he strangled them, stabbed them, or poisoned them, but given the situation of those who escaped and how they were injured, I can guess that there would have been some kind of violent nature to the way or method in which he killed these victims. It's such a very horrifying discovery. And to be honest with you, there is so much more out there. Like if we have to talk about this, there is so much more to be discovered of crazy weird people. The rate at which people go missing is alarming because people just can't disappear from the, uh, from, from the face of the earth. And it's not as if dead bodies are being found on the road. So where are these people going missing? Where are their bodies if they are dead? This is how you know that there are crazy people out there luring people into their homes and making them disappear. It's just a matter of who will be caught. Other than that, I don't doubt that there are so many Dennis Kazungu out there in the world. So you all better be safe because you cannot really tell who people truly are. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and comment your thoughts in the comment below.